G'day viewers, this is Troy from Troy's Digital Arts Channel. I have here a an ultra vintage roll of Kodak Kodachrome Double Eight movie film. Yes, this is the uh, first generation of the Kodachrome movie films. Um, well, the first uh, of the uh, f generations to follow, which was Kodachrome Two, Kodachrome Twenty Five, and Kodachrome Forty. Finally, um, before Kodachrome was discontinued. Anyway, um, this film here expired way back in March of 1962 and the process used for it at the time was K11. Anyway, I've um, recently shot this film and um, I actually did a, te a um, test strip first to wor work out um, what was the best exposure and best developing time. Now. Given the fact that this film is not only over 50 years old, but it is also um, less sensitive than the Kodachrome 2, this film is rated at, according to this uh, sheet, 10 ASA. Well, in, in today's um, terms of sensitivity, 10 ISO. The Kodachrome 2s were 25 ISO, and hence, um, yeah, I could get away with... Um, with shooting the film at 16 frames a second at maxed out exposure of f1.2 to compensate for age sensitivity loss. But anyway, for this film, not only had, did, did I have to um, max out the exposure to f1.2, but also I had to slow the frame rate down so that, that um, the pictures get captured at a lower shutter speed so that the um, insensitive film can capture the images. Anyway, um, according to this uh, light exposure table, um, yeah, for, for bright sunny light you use an aperture of f11, whereas for um, Kodachrome 2 onwards um, you use, for a bright sunny light you use um, f16. So yeah, this was pretty insensitive film to begin with. Well, anyway, getting back to the point, um, yeah, I shot this film around the Illawarra at 8 frames a second and yeah I did my shots around um, Lake Illawarra, around uh, Port Kembla Beach and around the pyramids of Port Kembla out near the harbour. Anyway, so yeah I shot this film at maxed out exposure of f1.2 and at 8 frames a second and I developed this film for four and a half minutes when I did my test strips I found that this film develops nicely at around four and a half minutes which is kind of unusual because um, the Kodachrome 2 required three minutes of de developing time and then the Kodachrome 25s required um, six min minutes of developing time and then the 40s the Kodachrome 40s are uh, nine to I guess twelve minutes of developing time anyway but um, Okay, well anyways, getting straight to the film, uh, so I did that, yeah, 8 frames a second, f1.2 exposure, and uh, four and a half minutes of developing in Cafenol CM to get a black and white negative, and I got absolutely stunning results. Now, once again, try and get this hopeless phone camera to focus is a pain in the bum but I'll get it focused in a minute anyway as you can see um, this 1962 expired film movie film made very very nice well contrasted pictures so yep yeah, it paid off to use to use maximum exposure and a, a much lower frame rate. Pretty much right throughout the film I got beautiful, stunning, impacty, contrasty pictures. I'll go I'll show a few sections of the film just to show you how nice the pictures actually look. And of course I've got a wrestle with this camera to get it to focus properly 
anyway, as you as you can see, the pictures look very nice. I do apologise about this focusing issue, so just bear with me for a, for a, hopefully no more than ten seconds. Probably best to show it at a bit of a distance. But yeah, as you can see, throughout the entire film, the pictures are well contrasted. And yeah, this film actually developed very nicely too because um yeah it's not too dark and it's not too light. It's just right. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed lately with my with my um Films I've shot my double eight camera. There's there seems to be be some some um, sprocket marks and um, next to the sprocket holes, and it seems like this film copped a bit of um, lo uh, light like exposure. I'm guessing maybe it's from either the camera is um, maybe because I have the viewfinder open all the time. Maybe it's probably copped a little bit of light in there, or maybe when I flip the uh, film over, or well, actually flip this one in. In my change bag in total darkness but yeah there's a little bit of it seems to cop a little bit of uh, light leak I've got to have to work out exactly what's causing it but now nonetheless the pictures are, are totally there and they absolutely look fantastic And in um, this lot of frames is the Pyramids of Port Kembla. Yeah, I pretty much did much of the second side of this film around the Pyramids of Port Kembla because they are quite... They're, they are very... Um, to me, they're quite interesting. So I thought I'd yeah, pan the camera around, do a few shots of them, and also do do a running... I, did, I sort of ran around the Pyramids with my camera... Yeah, do something a little bit crazy like that. Something I can make a nice comp film compile of. Yeah, totally. I just I love how this how this film came out. Pictures are just absolutely stunning. I know I sound like a broken record, but. To me, this is a total wow factor to get a 1962 movie film to make make such good pictures. It's a pity um, Kodachrome ain't around. Um, the Kodachrome process ain't in existence anymore um, as um, commercially. I know there's a guy up in Sydney who has successfully um, uh, replicated the Kodachrome process with some uh, still film it is quite a I mean it can be done but it's it's quite a um, yeah cumbersome process requires a lot of um, 
a lot of developed steps, a lot of different chemicals to produce a colour picture. So yeah, with these old cutter chromes, you can only, um, in general, the easiest way to develop them is to develop them as a black and white negative, and that's how I generally do my, that's pretty much how I do my cutter chromes, and using the standard black and white coffee, vitamin C, and washing soda developer. Anyway, to finish off this uh, video, I'll quickly go to to the uh, next part of it, which is also um, during the day that I shot that film, I also shot a uh, vintage Coda Color X 620 type color roll film that expired in March 1968. So for this film, yep, I... Um, it's 80 ASA, I pretty much um, treated it as 16 ASA, then I, you know, bumped the uh, exposure up by an extra f-stop just for extra measure, and yeah, I shot the film during the day around, um, the, uh, around the Illawarra, around uh, Lake Illawarra, around Port Kembla Beach and Port Kembla Pyramids and all that. And, um, yeah, better switch off the light just to show you the, the film because it's hanging up. And anyway, I cross processed this in C41 and I got color pictures like I did with my other Carter Color X films. Of course, um, they look very, very light and, um, yeah, it's really, really hard to see on the light box. But they're there, and um, when scanning in, they'll, they'll come up quite good, I'm pretty certain. Probably better off just switching on the light, and probably stick a bit of paper behind. I usually do this when I try and show my colour films <laughs> and if I had more patience I'd edit these videos and and um, edit, edit them down to a smaller size but this is all but unfortunately I don't have that patience so I'm doing this all live and the videos do become a bit long winded so for that I apologise but so why I do things, anyways. Um, yeah, I'll try and show the, the negatives. They're very, they're very, very light, but they are there, pretty much, and I can see distinct colours in them. This one looks a lot more visible. These negatives are also upside down too, so you're looking at upside down pictures. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Just to mention too, I think that with these old um, Kodakolor films, I think I'm going to have to try doing a um, separate bleach and fix process instead of doing the Blix process with them because um, the Blix tends to um, pretty much strip a lot of the uh, film emulsion. Um, I know with with the uh, 1950, early 1950s coat of colour films that I've developed, I got almost nothingness for, for um, negatives. And, um, yeah, I realised that it's because the Blix was stripping off the emulsion, leaving only a slight faintness of, of an image. For these coat of colour and coat of colour X films, they, they leave a decent image, a, a decent enough image, um, negative that that will produce a okay picture when scanned but still the negatives look quite light 
Um, and that's not due, not really due to the fact that the film is so insensitive and it didn't pick up enough on the lighting, but more so due to the fact that I think it's due to the fact that I'm using the blix instead of the instead of uh, instead of um, doing the bleach and the fix fixing separately. So yeah, um, next coat of color and coat of color X, I'm gonna gonna try bleaching and fixing separately next time I get a another Tetanol C41 kit. Anyway, time to wrap up this video. It's two films successfully shot and processed, and I'm very pleased with the results overall. Hope you enjoyed this video. This is Troy from Troy's Visual Arts, Visual Arts Channel signing out.